Hello everyone, Veronica here from Wedding Album Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to recolor a logo that you have downloaded from Wedding Album Cafe. All of our logos come in Adobe Illustrator format or PSD format. So you can of course recolor your logos using the Photoshop file that is included, but if you want to recolor your images in Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to show you how to do that. So to begin, you would open up the AI file that is included in your download. And here I have open Wedding Album Cafe Simple Elegance. Here is the logo that we're going to be recoloring. Now, you may want to recolor your logo based on an existing logo that you already have. So to the left, I have open Wedding Album Cafe's logo. This is great for if you already have existing stationery and you want to keep all of your packaging in the same color format. You can just go ahead and recolor your logo based on your existing colors. Additionally, I have open an image that I downloaded off the web. You may find a, an image that you just really love the colors and you'd like to incorporate that into your logo design and, and just create a whole new look for your packaging. So I'm going to show you how to extract the colors from both files. And the process is exactly the same. The very first thing that you're going to do is convert your image into an object. And to do that, we're going to be using Live Trace. Now, if you don't see Live Trace, there are two ways to access it. First, you would go to Window and then Control. And now you can see here a Live Trace button. Now, if you don't have your image selected, the Live Trace button will not appear. So you have to have it select it and then you can see that the live trace button is here. Optionally, you can go to object, live trace, and then tracing options. And then that will open up the live trace for you. Okay, so let's get started using our logo. I'll click on the image and you can see here that this is just one solid file. It is just like one solid block. Whereas if I click here, you can see that it's already broken down into objects. Okay, so we're going to go to Live Trace. Now I just hit the Live Trace button and what it did, it automatically traced it to a default setting and we don't want that because we haven't got any color here so we're going to undo make tracing and this time you want to make sure you come to this drop down here and you'll see that there are some presets and options so you want to click on that and now you want to come all the way down to tracing options now to begin the first thing I always do is click on preview because I want to be able to see what is happening on, on my artboard as I work. So we're going to go here. We have it set to default. And instead of black and white, I'm going to choose color. And we want the palette to be automatic, which means that it's going to take the colors from the existing image instead of one of the different color swatches that I already have open in Adobe Illustrator. And then it's asking how many maximum colors do you want? Now this logo does not have that many colors so the default is set to six and I'm thinking there aren't any more than six colors in this logo so I'm going to leave that as is. Now there's also an option to output this to swatches and since we are here to create a swatch I'm going to go ahead and click that. The next thing that we want to do is click on ignore white. So by ignoring the white we're going to basically create a transparent image. Now I'm going to leave all the rest of the settings as default because I'm really not interested in those right now. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on trace. And now you can see what has happened here in my swatches panel. I now have all of the colors that are included in my Wedding Album Cafe logo. Now I won't be able to use this on my logo because 
a color swatch is only available if you have saved it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this color swatch and I'll go to file, save swatch library as ASE. And then you want to name it something and I'm going to in this case name it WAC logo and then I'll click on save. Now it's going to say that your swatches containing gradients, patterns, or tints may not be available and that's fine. So we'll just say okay. So if I go here in my swatches panel, if I click on swatches and open swatch library and then user defined, you'll see now that I have WAC logo available to use on any artboard that I like. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the same thing for an ordinary JPEG that you may have downloaded and are interested in grabbing the colors. So exactly the same thing applies. You'll click on it to activate it and then you'll go to Live Trace tracing options, click on preview, color. Now this has a lot more colors than six. So let's say we're going to bump it up to 12. Again, we're going to output to swatch watches. And we'll ignore the white, sure, why not? And then we're going to hit trace. And now you can see that we have our colors once again saved uh, to our swatches. Now to make those available to use on another artboard, we would go ahead and save them, file, Save Swatch Library as ASE. And we're going to name this Invitation. And click OK. Now we can close those because we're finished with that. And now we're going to simply change the colors on our logo. So to do that, what we'll need to do is go to our swatch panel and we're going to open up a couple of swatches. And the first one we're going to open up is our user defined invitation as well as our user defined WAC logo. So now you see that in our swatches palette, we have invitation and WAC logo. So if I wanted to go ahead and change this logo to match my existing website and stationery, I would just go ahead and start experimenting with these colors. And to do that, you would just click on a grouping to change the entire grouping. Now, if I click on all of this, it's going to select all of the objects and therefore change the color on everything just like that. But we don't want that. So we're going to undo that swatch. And now I'm just going to click on the flourish here. Now up here in my color palette, you can see where the color is applied. There is a stroke but there's no fill color. So we're going to change the color of the stroke. And we'll do that. Let's say we're going to go with this dark brown color and say okay. And then we're going to work on the line here. Now as you can see, all of these elements are grouped together. So when I click on this object, not only does it select the top flourish, but it selects the bottom flourish as well because these objects are grouped together. So if I click on this, because they are also grouped together, you can see that it also 
selects all the lines that are included. So I'll change that color as well. And this is also a stroke and not a fill color. And then the text, you do the exact same way. But the text, instead of being a stroke, is a fill color. So you want to make sure that you click on the fill because that is the color that you're going to be changing. And then you can just experiment with some of the colors that are included in your swatch. And that's how simple it is to change the color of your logo. Okay, now let's say that we want to use the palette that we saved from our invitation. So once again, you'll click on the object that you'd like to recolor. And you can see here that this is set to the fill color, but there is no fill color. So be sure to click on the stroke. And we'll change that. Now see here what happened is I actually clicked on the stroke. So it did change the color, but it changed it in the stroke and you can't really see it as well. So make sure that you check on fill color. So here's the fill color. And there you have it. And of course you can play around with these colors and adjust them exactly to your liking. But I'm just showing you really quickly and simply how easy it is to change the colors of your logo. And once you are finished, be sure that you save your edits. And you would do that by simply going to File, Save As. And instead of writing over your existing um, file, I would just recommend you save it under a different name just in case you decide, you know, uh, I don't like it or whatever. You just want to reference back from the original file. So save it and then just click OK. Now you can use this directly from editor or you can select all, click on all these selected objects and drag them right into Photoshop. and then resize it. And this is what's so great about using Illustrator files is that they're so easily available from one program to the other and they're because they're fully vector, they're easy to scale without losing any quality at all. So there you have it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.